What's the most ridiculous thing you believed as a child? Story one. When I was a kid, my mom explained to me that we all had belly buttons because that's how our moms fed us before we were born. So I thought when you got pregnant, your belly button opened up and you just put whatever you wanted to down there. Like I thought women were just shoving chicken legs in their belly buttons. Story two, I grew up very close to the ocean and on nice evenings we would take walks on the beach. My mother would tell us that we should listen carefully when the sun was setting over the ocean because it would sizzle. You know how when you put out a fire with water. My sister and I went out of our ways to pretend to hear that. Story three, as a child, I really believed that if I didn't go to bed on time, the moon would come down and take me away. I'd lay in bed staring at the moonlight coming through my window, worried that it would somehow come alive and snatch me away if I wasn't asleep. I'd try to fall asleep as quickly as possible to avoid any chance of this happening. It's funny how a childhood fear can be so specific and elaborate. Story four, as a kid, I thought that if you swallowed gum, it would stay in your stomach for seven years. I was always so paranoid about chewing gum and swallowing it by accident that I would avoid it entirely. I didn't want to be stuck with a gum-filled stomach for years. It took me forever to realize it was just a silly myth, haha. -ha. Story 5. I'm an animal lover, and when I was little, my dad would discourage me from approaching wild animals by telling me that they would give me rabies. And if I got it, I would have to get shots in my stomach. My aunt was having fertility treatments one year and I saw my uncle give her shots in her stomach. And for years after, her being an animal lover like me, I thought that was her being treated for rabies. Story 6 used to think that if you stepped on a crack, it would literally break your mom's back. Like, I was convinced my mom had a crack meter or something. I remember avoiding cracks in the sidewalk like my life depended on it. Looking back, it's hilarious to think I had this mental image of a crack-detecting superpower. It's funny how kids can take the most random things so seriously. Story 7. Once I was playing with some toys and my mom was talking on the phone to her friend. I guess they were talking about kids growing up and having families someday because my mom puts her hand over the phone and asked me if I wanted kids someday and if I wanted boys or girls. I gave it some thought and said that I wanted one boy and one girl. For the longest time after this, I thought that it had been completely decided like my mom was just on the phone with whoever you call to place an order for kids and my order had been finalized. Story 8 that my parents loved me wanted and they were just too busy to show it and the TV shows were more important. Turns out I was a mistake that neither wanted but felt obligated to raise. Had to raise myself at nine when my dad worked nights and my mom went out partying with her friends. At least I learned how to cook and manage my time. Story nine. This is so weirdly specific, LOL. We had two dogs and the girl got pregnant. What my grandma told little me was, Max put the puppies in Molly's tummy through a little hole. I had seen him humping her before, so I accepted this explanation. Then, when she actually had her puppies, there were so many. I knew humans only had like one or two at a time, usually, and I had never seen humans humping, so I concluded that each individual hump transferred one baby in. So for humans to make a baby, it was one thrust or two if you want twins. Story 10. My mom is pretty absent-minded. She would always leave the turn signal on, and as a kid, I didn't know what it was called, but the sound annoyed me. So I used to tell her, Mom, turn the tink toinker off. I never remember her laughing at me or anything, just like, oh, okay, you're right, and turning it off. So one day at like 11, 12 years old, I'm in my friend's car. Tell them the tink tinker is still on. They are confused, I'm confused, then I start to get laughed at. I honestly believed the turn signal was called tink toinker for years. I was so embarrassed slash angry that no one in my family thought to correct me, ever. Story 11. The little man who lives in the stoplights and manually changes it from red, green, yellow. I didn't continue to think that as I got older, but I honestly had no idea how they worked until I took my driving lessons and the instructor mentioned the weight sensors because they were slightly exposed at a specific stoplight we came to. Story 12. I was about five when I swore up and down that I heard the Easter Bunny hopping around the house and I was trying to convince my dad and older brother that there were Easter Bunny tracks in the front yard. I couldn't understand why they were trying to hold back from laughing. Story 13. I used to think other countries were up in the sky because planes go in the sky. You fly up to 30,000 feet, get off in Australia. Then if you want to go to a different country, board a plane and go up to 60,000. Want to return to Australia? Got to go back down like an elevator. Story 14. I thought that pro athletes had to have their own cameras in order to be on TV. I'm not sure how my mind thought it worked, but... When I watched a baseball game and they showed the pitcher, I thought it was like the first baseman looking at him with his camera, which I imagined was perched on his head. Why you couldn't see the cameras on their heads, I have no idea. I watched a lot of sports with my dad growing up. Finally, when I was about nine, I got the courage to ask him how much those cameras cost. 
One very hilarious from his POV conversation ensued, and he tells that story all, the damn, time. He's over 80 now. Story 15. I didn't quite know what credit or debit actually meant. I thought that credit meant that we had points and the store was giving us the stuff for free. I thought that debit meant that we were going into debt and we couldn't pay for it. So when the cashier would ask my mom which she was using, I would either do a little happy dance or look very sad, depending on what she said. Story 16. When I was a child, I asked my granddad why he was bald. He told me that he went to a zoo and a giraffe licked the hair off the top of his head. I never questioned this throughout my childhood. When I was about 19, I was out with my friends and we were talking about going bald. I said my granddad went bald because a giraffe licked his hair off and instantly realized how ridiculous it was once I said it out loud. Story 17. A fun one. My neighbor, sister, and I were all convinced that the inflatable tree Halloween decoration my neighbors put up at the end of the street was hainted. We'd have competitions daring each other to get close to it or touch it. Towards the end, I knew it was all play and I wasn't actually scared anymore, but I played along for my neighbor and younger sis. Less fun one, that if you walked through any security detector and it beeped, or if you were caught on a surveillance camera doing anything bad, stealing, smuggling, picking my nose, antagonizing my sis, having a meltdown, etc., that police officers with guns drawn would jump out, take away and ransack, go through all of my possessions, pull me away from my mom, handcuff me and take me and my mom to jail, and they'd yell at me, threaten to shoot me, giving me no chance to speak, using my words against me, etc. The odd thing, especially at that time in my life, is that I was largely unaware of police brutality. The experiences I had with police were a canine officer neighbor who liked to yell and stop around a lot, the officers that show off their police cars and emergency vehicles at city functions, and the ones strutting around my school and giving safety lectures at assemblies. I have since had personal bad encounters with police and follow the news, so I am still extremely nervous around officers and any metal detector or security scan usually causes a panic attack. What sucks is my motorized wheelchair will set off every metal detector ever, and the noises will draw lots of attention. Story 18 that my mom was committing crime every day by drinking and driving. I told the teacher, and my mom had to come in and explain. She would bring tea with her in the car to drink. Every morning, my day would start with me thinking my mom is up to crime again and then head off to school. Story 19. Based on watching Trumpton, I wanted to be a fireman when I grew up. Well, they never did attend any actual fires and did that concert. Same tune every time at the end of each episode. For more or less the same series, I also wanted to work in a biscuit factory based on watching Chigley. Also, up to being about 18, I still thought wrestling was real. What convinced me it was all staged was watching the 1994 Survivor Series. Randy Savage got bitten by a king cobra and lived to tell the tale. It was obvious the snake had been defanged. And finally, my late nan used to tell me that the pigeons on Fargate and the moor were like the ravens in the Tower of London. If they ever totally flew away, all the shops would fall down. Story 20. When I was about 10 years old, a stray cat had made its way to my parents' house. My siblings and I would feed it. One day, we were able to adopt it and bring it into the house. Well, one evening, the cat attacked my sister unprovoked. My parents took it to the vet, and we never saw the cat again. When my parents came home, we asked them where the cat went, and my dad said it went to a farm. About a year ago, we found out that the cat had actually been put down. When my siblings and I confronted my dad about it, he goes, do you think we would have allowed the cat to go attack children on a farm? I can't believe we actually thought that our parents took the cat to a farm. Story 21. I believe that if you looked into the mirror in the dark, that the dark reflection of you was the evil version of you, and it was just waiting for you to see it so that it could pull you in and take your place in the real world, and then you would be trapped in the mirror forever while evil you went through your life. I still don't look into mirrors in the dark. Not me. But I have my seven-year-old convinced that I can feel bad dreams as they grow in her head before she goes to sleep. And so a couple of times a week, I pull the dreams out and ask her about whether she wants to keep them or not. If she says no, I throw them away where they dissolve. Or if she says yes, I pop them back in her head. It's fun thinking up weird things to pull out or fun things to put back in. Story 22, I have two. The first, I would watch my parents when they ate food. I noticed that they would blow on their food, take a bite. Then they would add salt. I noticed, though, that after they added salt, the wouldn't blow on it anymore. My conclusion, in my little four, six-year-old mind, was that salt made the food cooler. The second, I saw my mom washing her hands after handling some hamburger, but the water was hot. I asked her why she had the water hot, and she said it helped to melt the fat off her hands. Again, 
at four, six years old, I thought if I took hot showers, it would get rid of any fat I had. This was before I knew about growth spurts and how kids sometimes gain a little weight before shooting up like string bean, as my mom would say. Story 23. I was the youngest of three boys. Back when the alligator pet craze was going on, there were news stories about live alligators living in NYC sewers after being flushed down the toilet by people tired of caring for their gator. So when we visited family in NYC, I would walk around any sewer grates because my older brothers had convinced me the alligators could grab people who walked over the grates. Story 24. When I was seven, my dad explained to me that when babies are hungry, they go up to the boobs to get milk. I had this video in my mind where a baby would swim up inside the mother's body and stuck on internal nipples. A less innocent one is that up until I was three quarters, I thought only women and girls had lips until one day I looked at my brother and noticed he also had lips. Story 25. I thought that whenever I had a bath that I would be sucked down the drain. Me and my sister would be in the bathtub together and she had to sit in the front. Of course, one parent would be there to bathe us. Yeah, I used to think I could fit down the drain. Thanks, Scrubbing Bubbles commercial. Thanks, Scrubbing. Story 26. When I was a kid, I was chewing gum at a friend's house when his grandma said, don't swallow it, it gives you candles. Well, at least that's what I thought, she said. So I thought candles, actual lit candles, would grow inside. Years later, like 20, I thought, oh, she must have said cancer, which is still weird, but not as weird as candles. She had an Irish accent, so it must have just sounded like candles. Story 27. I got some stickers as a kid with pink and blue sparkly cats and dogs. I asked my mom if pink sparkly dogs are real because I want one. She said she didn't think dogs could be pink. I was sad but hopeful. A few weeks later, I saw a pink dog in our neighborhood. I was elated and started planning my life with a pink sparkly dog. But the next time I saw it, it was just a boring white dog because pink dye, which obviously was just not the same type of magic. Law broke my little five-year-old heart. Story 28. A few times my grandfather took me snipe hunting in the field behind our house. We used to go with baseball bats in a large bag. He said when the snipes come out of their burrows, we should hit them in the head and stuff them in the bag before they wake up. We did this probably five or six times before I figured it out. That was all just a trick. Of course, it didn't stop me from doing it with my kids when they were about five or six. Story 29. My grandparents had a huge mansion when I was a kid. They had five kids and bought this rundown old house to have enough space for everyone. It's literally like in a scary movie. Buying the house that's big but cheap and never wondering why. Of course, my aunts and uncles had plenty of stories about how creepy and haunted the house was. Lots of stories I could tell here. But the dumbest thing I believed as a kid was that there was a knocking wall where if you knock on it, a ghost knocks back. Strangely, it only worked when my grandpa was around. It wasn't until I was like 10 or so before I realized it was just my grandpa knocking from the other side. Story 30. My sisters told me there's a massive fish at the bottom of every lake that is the size of the lake bed. I attribute my fear of deep and dark waters to this. I was scared of the lake weed touching me after this. My cousin told me we get all the clouds for the year from the smoke generated by fireworks. The same cousin told me that if you get a fish scale on your skin and don't remove it fast enough, you'll have that scale on your skin forever. I didn't believe him when he said this because it sounded odd to me as a child. But he also said black people like Asian carp because of all the bones. That last one is pure racist BS, of course. His dad and our grandpa are were racist. My cousin is now a flat-earth conservative at 28, so he's a racist idiot. Straight up, he thinks there's an ice wall at the edge. Story 31. My dad once told me not to make this one sound with my mouth I was making because it would make my stomach hurt. I literally never did it again because I was a kid that had some, at the time, unexplained stomach issues no one believed me on. I got diagnosed at 14 with ulcerative colitis and was still convinced I caused it. As a grown-ass woman, I know he was just trying to get me to stop being annoying, but that really messed with my head. Story 32. Oh, dear. Keep in mind, I was five. We hadn't had the birds and the bees talk. My little brother was born, and I didn't quite comprehend that he was in my mom's tummy. I was a smart child, but also super gullible and ditzy. Still am. I asked when he was born if we could exchange him for a girl. I wholeheartedly believed you could buy a baby from Walmart. Walmart has everything. Why not babies? I was distraught when I was told that I was stuck with a little brother. I wish I was joking. It makes for funny jokes, though. Story 33. I spent about five years fully believing I was Jesus reborn. Like, no joke was convinced I was the Messiah. I didn't tell anyone I thought this because they are not yet ready. Eventually, I found out I was not Jesus, and that's when I began to lose faith until I no longer believed, because if I'm not him, then it must be made up. A Story 34. I grew up in the north of England, and whenever I heard mention of Teesside, Middlesbrough. I used to hear it as Teesside, 
and kind of imagined it as being a place where there was tea instead of water. Like instead of going to the seaside, you could go to the tea side and bathe in an ocean of tea. That's literally what I thought when I was about five. Maybe going to show just how dense I was as a kid IDK.